Um, thank you so much for this opportunity to have this conversation and uh, for inviting to this beautiful space, your studio. Um, I can see your presence everywhere here. <laughs> um, uh, it's my absolute pleasure and you know how I always enjoy our conversations and um, sharing this space with you, it's, it's very special for me. Mm. And normally I'm in, in a complete solitude here, <laughs> so it's really special to share it with someone. I'm glad, I'm glad. And um, also tell me, how, how long have you been here in London? Um, it's been, it's something about 14 years, 14, 14 15 years. years. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's really hard to say. <laughs> Time flies. Okay, Gana, can you tell me please more about uh, this work that is right behind you? It's uh, the whole series, right, that you created, uh, which is called Creation Myth. Right? Uh, yeah, so the, this large canvas belongs to a collection which called Creation Myth mm -hmm. and uh, some of the codes you see are also mm -hmm. from this uh, collection. Uh, and it's, I never finished this project, it's kind of ongoing, ongoing. ongoing work mm -hmm. and uh, this is the way I work. I work in, in certain collections so I kind of, um, uh, I run few different directions at the same time and I would, for me personally for me it's the same story it's mm -hmm. like ever ever unraveling the same story um, but each one looks I wouldn't say completely different but mm -hmm. I use different technique to mm -hmm. uh, to kind of to show different aspects of the same idea mm -hmm. which I'm talking about so in this particular project it's, it's more, I'm telling the, how the world was created, how life came into this mm -hmm. earth, into existence. And I'm, I'm talking about primordial matters, primordial mm -hmm. materials and elements. Uh, that's kind of reflected in a very um, rough um, technique. Mm -hmm. So in this particular collection, in Creation Myth, I'm uh, in in this particular stage of the creation myth, I'm talking more about primord primordial elements and how Earth was mm -hmm. created. And there are a few stages in this project. And uh, the one you see behind me and the one you see here mm -hmm. is more about, uh, so this is a stage where life is still an idea. So life is still, I'm using the uh, palette of a light spectrum. Mm -hmm. So life is not an organic, thing yet. So it's still kind of an idea which, mm -hmm. which still uh, is searching for the channel to be manifested. And there are a few paintings in this collection where I'm using, I'm kind of referencing uh, cave drawings and cave paintings and I'm using this palette where I use uh, brown and grey and uh, mm -hmm. earthly colours. Mm -hmm. uh, and lots of reds in the, as a symbol of uh, blood and organic life. So in these paintings I'm saying that life is already here. Mm -hmm. It's already present as a biological, mm -hmm. uh, a biological level. Is it uh, the cave drawings from Kazakhstan that you've seen? The whole collection is, has started from uh, Kazakh uh, petroglyphs. The and mm -hmm. uh, the way it started, it was very interesting. I started uh, working on small watercolors, and what I did, I was just uh, copying this cave drawings, and I'm mm -hmm. sure you know them yes, very well. Yes, from my childhood. Yes. <laughs> and you, I'm sure you know how much uh, meaning they have. Exactly, they are our childhood, and they're very and they're pictures and images we are used to see mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is a symbol of our city. So what I did, I took this um, image and I, mm, I just colored it. Mm -hmm. So I used color, colorful watercolors to do this, to replicate the same drawings. <laughs> and, and I was completely struck by the, uh, by the point when 
when this picture started saying me a story. So for me, it was uh, clear that I found a key to mm -hmm. some interesting story of how the world was created. Mm -hmm. So and in a way, I was kind of uh, inspired by the point that you know the um, Chinese army, uh, the terracotta army. Ah, yes. They were mm -hmm. colorful before. Ah, and, and then uh, with and time, then the big man mm -hmm. uh, went away with time, mm. disappeared with time, and uh, they are how we how we see them now. Uh, so I kind of I was inspired by the story, and I thought to myself that probably our cave drawings were colorful as well. So I'll I'll do I'll I'll make them colorful. Yeah. So this is how it's all started, and then I mm -hmm. kind of, of course, I was interested in how mm -hmm. it can be reflected in oil. Mm -hmm. on canvas and when you work with oil it's a different technique and then so the, the whole story kind of started yes that's a, that's very interesting how you use the media because uh, you this project indeed is so like a uh, huge it uh, you start from can oil on canvas, but then you work with textile. Mm. Uh, so you produce these coats, and then it's the whole. I mean, it's a continuation of this story, but it just looks completely different. Can you tell us more about the, your um, project manifestations? That is also part of this creation mm. myth uh, project. Yes, so the um, creation myth is a big part of manifestations, and manifestations is a brand of clothing. Mm -hmm. and, but it's not clothing in terms of being a fashion clothing. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I'm a fashion designer, never. Uh, so the designs, they're very simple and minimalistic and perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm kind of saying perfect that it's, it has a big meaning for me to make them perfect to last. Uh, th they are perfect. <laughs> I can feel that, you know, the way they Thank envelops you, uh, you and uh, the beauty and the story, you are kind of bec becoming uh, one with this myth, you know, like a part of yeah. the story in yes. a way. So thank yes. you. <laughs> thank you. No, that's, that's, that's very important. For me, that was the, the most important point in the beginning of this brand, that I wanted to create a perfect canvas, which mm -hmm. will be wearable. Because uh, it's a wearable artwork. It, it is a wearable artwork, and it's a it's a kind of it's a very important aspect for me that I'm making a, a owner of the coat mm -hmm. manifest the story and become um, become part of this uh, conversation conversation and mm -hmm. kind of uh, so from it's. From the from the from art which will be covered in mm -hmm. your home and will be very private, it kind of it goes outside, it goes on the streets, and so uh, so I it travels. Can see near, yes, I, and and I deliberately decided I will not do anything else but coats because, mm -hmm. as you know, we are from the same culture and coats are the most impo important possession for us. And uh, code says everything about you, and mm -hmm. it kind of it, it's almost like your passport. It's something you have uh, to show. Mm -hmm. It's something you have to say to manifest your story. So, mm -hmm. in the step, any nomad will recognize each other by what they they were by by their code. <laughs> so, for me, code is an important um, object, mm -hmm. and at the same time. Uh, another kind of side of, of this project that I want uh, my art uh, to travel not only uh, in terms of distance and territories but also uh, I want them to travel different cultures so uh, most of the cl clients they're coming from different cultures M most of the uh, people who own my pieces now they're from completely different cultures and they still they grasp this idea they find they they always find their story mm -hmm. and the way uh, and now I understand why it happens because uh, I'm using the um, universal archetypes mm -hmm. and I'm referring to so many stories and to so many uh, gods and myths and legends mm -hmm. uh, and I'm saying so many, but 
there are a certain amount of them. They're yeah. not the kind of we now after studying it for so long, now I know that they talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From culture to culture, all these archetypes, they, they talk to each other. And you always kind of, you, 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 when you study it deeply, you see like, ah, oh, okay, this is mm -hmm. again, it's something very dear to me. I know this from my childhood, but it's in, in a completely different culture. So uh, in a way, like uh, when someone gets your code, then he is uh, uh, continuing your story, but in his or her own way. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. What I've noticed, and I was very pleased with it, that um, when first my code enters the, someone's life, mm -hmm. they, they still mention me sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like on Instagram, on Facebook, they still mention that it's, it's yeah. a code from Ghana. Ghana. Yeah. And after a few weeks, they, they forget about me. And I'm so happy about it that mm -hmm. it for me it means that it became their story. Part they of now, yeah. ne, now they are manifesting their own not stories. Their own story, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's so interesting because uh, when we entered your studio today, uh, the feeling was like, uh, am I am I still in 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 this world or is it another world? You know, like so I was wanted to ask you. Uh, do you see a clear line between the reality and, uh, let's say, um, myth that you create? Uh, I mean, uh, maybe it's more about like daydreaming because, I mean, when you're working, when you're producing, you probably are in this transcendental state, mm. uh, just looking mm. at your works. Mm. It, it is a very interesting question. and. Um, And it makes me think about what is what what is actually my reality, and uh, so my kind of day-to-day uh, -day reality is that I work um, almost all the time, and mm -hmm. I have the studio here, and I have my space, my studio at home. Uh, so I never stop working, and most of the time I I paint, and when I'm not painting then I'm thinking about painting and I'm ma imagining myself painting and uh, or I'm doing something small drawings or I'm working on the codes and so it's a constant ongoing process and in a way I live through the imaginary space all the time I live in this mm -hmm. imaginary space but at the same time you have to go back to reality sometimes. I have to go back to reality and <laughs> yeah. uh, to be a mom and to... You have two to, beautiful daughters. To perform all different roles. Exactly. Um, though I'm very lucky that my family is completely included in this <laughs> process. <laughs> process. And uh, I can kind of keep discussing things mm -hmm. with them. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone would understand me. So probably that's why I don't have a conflict between mm -hmm. this imaginary world and Mythical, my normal, yeah. mm -hmm. normal life. Mm -hmm. um, and also, but, but I have to say, yet to answering your question, I'm quite clear. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the line. I know where the switch is. I know how to switch on. Uh, into different... Um, Is it difficult to leave one state? No, absolutely not. It, no? it was never a mm -hmm. difficult. It was never a choice for me uh, mm -hmm. where, whether I mm -hmm. choose this uh, reality okay. or imaginary. Yeah. I uh, see. It's very clear <coughs> and um, also I have um, very vivid uh, dreams through the night and it's almost it feels like it, it's a continuation of of the mm -hmm. process as i told you uh, the story of this painting for example mm -hmm. I, I i struggled a little bit with this painting and sometimes it happens when you kind of it takes you it mm -hmm. takes you to to some direction you don't want to go mm -hmm. like and at this moment uh, you have to let go and completely follow the painting mm -hmm. and so I was a bit like <laughs> refusing to go 
a certain direction. So I, I struggled a little bit and I went to sleep and I, and I saw this dream where I couldn't find the door. And, uh, uh, and the, the feeling was so, so painful that I cannot find the door. And Sorry, we, we were just talking uh, about yeah. it before the interview. So it's about your new series, right? About, yes, um, about the which light, is light works. Yes, it's about the light works. And uh, mm -hmm. because this, is, this project is so fresh, it's only coming out now. We're going to talk about it later. <laughs> yes, so it kind of it takes me places where sometimes I don't want to go or I don't mm -hmm. want to follow or I'm too scared to go because I don't know if I'm able to mm -hmm. do it, you know. So it, answering your question, myth and reality is perfectly living together. <laughs> Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so you mentioned uh, to me once that you are inspired by Tengri, Tengrinism, and uh, tell us about uh, the influence of nomadic culture on your um, on your artwork. Hmm. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even say that I'm inspired uh, mm -hmm. by Tengri. Uh, I deeply feel it. I understand it. I relate to everything what Tengri is and this philosophy. For me, it makes perfect sense. Uh, it kind of it describes my my inner philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a very clear structure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there is. Tengri, great blue sky, and there is Umai, Mother Earth. So mm -hmm. there's two, and you are mm -hmm. a combination of these two. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't need more. I see. You don't need more. And so in my work, in a way, I use a lot of that, of that mm -hmm. to kind of juxtap juxtaposition of blue, and yellow, earthly, and heavenly. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, like in your work, uh, um, at least it's from my point of view, uh, maybe it's subjective, but I feel a lot of feminine uh, part of your like being there and very sensual. And uh, in a way I saw that it somehow connects to, to Umai. So, mm. what is the importance of Umai in your work? Mm. Umai means a lot for me, and uh, it's a ground I'm standing on. Mm -hmm. It's, it is mother, it is nature, it's earth, and Umai is a female manifestation of Tengri, mm -hmm. and it's. It is beautifully explained in the in this legend where uh, when the, the the human being is born, he gets his soul from Tengri, mm -hmm. and it's blue, and uh, he gets his body uh, from Mother Earth, mm -hmm. and it's yellow. So again, we're coming to this uh, symbolical juxtap juxtaposition of two colors, mm -hmm. two two materials. And when the human being is uh, is dead, his body stays with the mother mm -hmm. and his soul goes back to the great blue sky, Tengri. And this kind of this uh, biological circle uh, is clearly described in Tengri-Umai relationship. So Umai for me is uh, it's one of the most important um, how to say energies. No, I wouldn't call her God. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an energy. It's a feminine energy, and each one of us is both Tengri mm -hmm. and Umai. So when I I call on to her energy when I feel like I'm flying flying too high and mm -hmm. I need some grounding in a way. So I come to her. For me, she's ever, ever accepting, ever forgiving, mm -hmm. ever waiting for me to come mm -hmm. back. So she's always there. Like a mother. <laughs> like a mother. And also uh, another aspect of this that I use her elements, mm -hmm. I use her 
pigments mm -hmm. to reflect on Tengri. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of I'm looking into the into this the most mm -hmm. beautiful face of Tengri, and I'm trying to replicate this beauty using her pigments and her materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's very interesting. And uh, you know, like we are talking about Tengriism, and um, let's say we're talking from the Central Asia part. But in a way, uh, you know, like uh, in your work and the way you use myth, it looks like you are traveling the world like a true nomad, let's say, and you are covering this universal. Um, meaning of the myth because uh, even you in your necklace this totem totem necklace which i actually want you to tell me more about it mm. it's so obvious that there is more presence of uh different myth mm. and maybe different gods mm. <laughs> so mm. can you can you tell us more about it yes absolutely it's a it's an interesting point so uh, necklace the totem totem necklace i call it hero it's a uh, hero hero yeah it's a mm -hmm. hero it's almost like a formula how to be a hero what does it mean for me to be a hero mm -hmm. and i refer to many different myths and legends and gods as well in this object and again kind of the i'm using my own uh my own image of a necklace and it's it's a it's a quite unusual necklace it's very big it's a it, it covers the whole of your chest mm -hmm. and you perfectly know this uh, necklace it's kind of uh, it is a necklace from Adai region from Caspian Sea Mangistau uh, okay. it's, it's a big Kazakh necklace uh, where you have the information is given to you in certain levels. So I built my necklace in the same way. So it represents a totem, a certain column of mm -hmm. images. And I start my story with um, with a little bird with an olive branch in mm -hmm. her beak, uh, referring to Noah. Mm -hmm. And by this I'm saying Noah is a big hero, hero for me, one of the biggest, you mm -hmm. know, he's the, uh, he did his heroic deed <laughs> very well. So uh, I'm saying that he, he, being a hero means dreaming and kind of letting yourself dream and sending these dreams into the world and they will come back to you with the good news, with mm -hmm. a branch. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next level is um, a snake in the shape of a sun disk. So I'm saying here, I'm referring to e Egyptian god Ra. Mm -hmm. And by this I'm saying that sun travels everywhere mm -hmm. as a, being a co cosmological nomad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, again, and I'm saying that we are all united, we are all east and west and north and south, we are all that. And, and then the, the, the face of the, uh, of the hero, it doesn't have a gender, it has a third eye open and um, I, I took the face from my culture, from Bal Bal. Do you mm -hmm. know this uh, stone, yeah. stone Bal Bals? They're fascinating uh, images. So you kind of, you, you, you travel a hundred kilometers of empty space and then suddenly you see this uh, ancient old sculpture with a face, very kind of generic, but beautiful, beautiful faces. So I took this face from Bal Bal and then the hero has wings mm -hmm. uh, as a symbol that you to be a hero means that you're always ready to jump and fly mm -hmm. and then the hero stays on the fish uh, I'm saying here that you don't forget that you're standing on the slippery surface of the reality which uh, mm -hmm. any moment can slip away from you and I took this image uh, from one of the Persian uh, drawings where it was a tiger uh, with a human face standing on the fish and mm -hmm. I asked uh, I asked what what is the meaning and they explained me that this is exactly uh, what it means that this was a the tiger was a um, 
head of uh, the city or something like that, or Shah. Mm -hmm. And uh, this picture was kind of a, a reminder for him that the, the reality can slip away from him any moment, and it's not it's not that mm -hmm. uh, it's not that clear. Yeah, so yeah. it's so interesting that so the world becomes one in your totem necklace. Absolutely. And also I forgot to say a very important point that fish is a, is a symbol of a cro Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, of course. So this is kind of, it's all, I touched everything in this totem, uh, but I based it on my cultural heritage. <laughs> yes, about your cultural heritage, it's actually you have very interesting background mm. uh, because you were born in Kazakhstan, mm. uh, but your mom is from Georgia. So yes. you were in a way exposed into both cultures and religions as well. Mm. So mm, it's Muslim and Christian at the same time, Kazakh and Georgian. Mm. Uh, uh, how, how, how does it coexist in you? <laughs> so it, it obviously it coexists beautifully in you because we yeah. can see all your creations. But what do you think? Um, I wouldn't say that it was always smooth. Mm -hmm in terms of, I'm a human being and of course I've been a teenager and not there, not there, you know, like uh, looking differently than someone would be like expected, very Kazakh or very Georg uh, Georgian, I was not there, not there. And, but I would say even in that I'm a true nomad, mm -hmm. even my DNA traveled. <laughs> And I'm, I'm also, when I'm saying, when I'm saying about Kazakhstan, and I'm constantly coming back to my culture, and I'm saying, I'm kind of using more the name itself, Kazakhstan, in a very formal way. I'm referring to the whole region, to Caucasus and uh, Georgia and Kazakhstan. It's all part of the Silk Route. Mm -hmm. where everything was mixed together, all the nations were mixed together. So it's more like of a metaphysical space very, rather than... Mm -hmm. Very, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, so, but uh, there are many, again, there are many aspects of it. So my mom is Orthodox, Orthodox Christian and my dad is Muslim. And I, I experienced both. And I have, uh, and I cherish both sides as well. Um, it doesn't matter where kind of, uh, still my, my heart belongs to Tengri. It's, for me, it's mm -hmm. kind of more clear, clear. Uh, but at the same time, it started a conversation in me, which I uh, reflect in my paintings a lot. And I have a project which called The Holy Gardens, where I paint, uh, portraits of saints mm -hmm. and I give them they're, they're vaguely painted so you cannot really clearly see the face but you see that it's a human being it's a physical physical presence of a human being uh, and one of the um, paintings which called the, it's a triptych called uh, San Nino I, I paint San Nino uh, it's one of the most important it's the most important saint uh, for Georgians she came a young girl 16 years old girl came from Cappadocia and brought Christianity to Georgia mm -hmm. and in in this paintings I'm not showing her as a person rather spiritual spiritual soul mm -hmm. um, and here I'm saying, I'm kind of reflecting my uh, Muslim Islamic side where image was never, uh, was forbidden to uh, be depicted. Um, but at the same time, I'm kind of referencing the, the, the image of the holy icon mm -hmm. where uh, it was clearly seen that it's a human being. And uh, in these paintings, I'm saying that we are praying to saints giving them um, our own face, our own kind of perfect picture of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, so it's, again, so you're answering your question. It's a, it's a conversation. It, uh, it leaves in me. It's just a ever unraveling story of mm -hmm. my life and of the story of the general kind of universal life. 
It's uh, so interesting, you know, like when you're sharing all these stories, it's so captivating. Even for me, I mean, I know I'm, I come, in, I come mm. also from Kazakhstan and I've heard all these stories, but it's still very interesting. And I know about your collaboration mm. with musicians, I think. Um, was it with Olivier Bersadi and Jimmy Green? Uh, they created the music for the serious steps that you have. Mm. Uh, can you tell more about this collaboration? Mm. Yes, I, I was. I'm a, I'm a very lucky artist. I I collaborated a lot, and it was always interesting. And um, uh, not even one was with Kazakh artists. It was always with uh, different different cultures. Uh, and this one was particularly interesting because we were creating something very Kazakh mm -hmm. with Western musician mm -hmm. musicians, two mm -hmm. of them. <laughs> And uh, so I didn't know how to, I, I kind of, I looked, uh, I, I, I have heard my culture through someone's ears from the, from, from the different point. So you made me choose what's important and what's not. So what mm -hmm. to show and what's not. And it's coming from our previous conversation with you. Uh, there is not much information about our culture so we were explained through through the eyes of uh, settled nations mm -hmm. so in a way we have to as we discussed we have to follow our own intuition what's true and what's not about our culture and so this was my job in this project i had to explain what's true and what's not mm -hmm. and what is important and what's not and what it is to be uh, someone from Central Asia. So we had few takes on this music piece. Uh, and the first one was so far away from uh, from what I expected or from what I feel organic mm -hmm. uh, being a sound. Because what they were creating, they were creating a sound of a step. So it was done for, the, the music piece was supposed to be throughout the whole exhibition on loop, creating the sound effect of the step, what is happening there in the step. And the first one was very, very Western, and I was quite upset that I, c I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't connect. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't explain myself. Mm -hmm. And then, as a result, we have a piece which I absolutely adore, and I listen to it, and I cry every single time because it touches all my, all my strings. <laughs> um, Mm -hmm. And I understood that uh, so, so for me it was like a big uh, thing that art can go anywhere, it can penetrate different cultures, it can penetrate any differences. And we understand each other through art perfectly well if mm -hmm. we tune into the waves of each other. I got is there new, new projects, projects that you're you working, working on at the moment? Um, I always have a choice of <laughs> new projects. <laughs> it's, uh, for me, it's very difficult to stop. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm working on a new collection of paintings now. Uh, the name is Tengri, Flightworks. Tengri, <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, so it, it's kind of, a, it's another stage of creation myth. It's the same story, uh, but it's just a different stage of it and different techniques. Which develops further. Yes, so mm -hmm. which develops further, mm -hmm. and I will, mm, I will not tell you more because it's too fresh. It's just You're coming still out. Working I'm on still it. working on it. It still kind of uh, tells me its story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see three works in yeah. here, and uh, I, I, they're absolutely amazing, and uh, they're so sensual. But I would like to hear more, but maybe in the next yeah. interview. So uh, coming back to collaborations, our collaboration was you, Yada, and Aigana Gali. So it's again work with textile. Mm -hmm. It's uh, something that one can wear. Uh, and you use uh, different signs there as well, symbols. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are several, uh, several different images. Uh, can you tell just, um, are they again the continuation of the creation myth mm -hmm. or is it something else? In in a way, they of course they are coming from the same source, 
but uh, because it's a it's a wearable piece, so uh, the, the the tonality is different, so it's more decorative. And you know, in our culture, we use lots of ornamental uh, decoration for on objects. So this is where I kind of um, what I use for for the wearable pieces. Um, they are very symbolical pieces, and I took a lot of inspiration from shamanic symbols and shamanic drawings from right. all over the world, not just Kazakhstan. And uh, I kind of reflected on that a lot. Uh, and I'm using kind of a combination of symbols, um, almost creating a protective kind of uh, armor around the person who wears it. Uh, so for Yada, uh, I made two, uh, two designs. One, one is a bull. Uh, it's a symbol of this year, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a sacred bull with a third eye, uh, wide open, uh, decorated, and a very kind of determined face on structure of a bull. Uh, and I have these beautiful symbols which I use all the time throughout my work uh, on the canvases and same in uh, jewelry and on coats. Uh, I use this, uh, the, the symbol of infinity and then an arrow and the star. This kind of combination is almost like a sent sentence I'm saying that uh, whatever happens, don't stop. Uh, kind of the direction is always there, it's, it's up there, so never stop um, kind of facing the stars. Wow, amazing, can't wait. <laughs> well, right, thank you so much, thank you, it yeah. was um, a journey today, yeah. but we'll continue this journey. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you.